Can you just talk a little bit about Rene Girard? Because we've mentioned him a bunch of times in this, and, I'm, and I think a lot of people are going to be like, who the heck is this guy? Can we just talk about him for a second, who he is? Like, how did you find, what, is, what did he do? Why is he, why, why, why Rene? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have name dropped him without mm-hmm. saying a little, a little bit about him. So Girard is a fascinating uh, character. He, he's a Frenchman who came to the U.S. after World War II. He, start, he went to Indiana University to get his Ph.D. in history. But he became a polymath, um, an autodidact who studied um, way outside of his domain of expertise. And that's what makes him so fascinating. There's just not a lot of sort of um, these like great interdisciplinary minds in the world today that, that can draw off of um, sociology, history, anthropology, um, theology. Um, he just sort of like put it all together. And he, in and, and literature, right, he read deeply from literature. Uh, and he made this sort of fundamental discovery of mimetic desire in the late 1950s through reading classic literature. Uh, because he realized that all literature, uh, even fiction, maybe even especially fiction, is what you could think of as an archive of self of, of self knowledge or, or knowledge about human nature. Mm. Uh, I think viewing literature as an archive of self knowledge is is I credit that to Cynthia Haven, who wrote a biography on, on Girard, which is great. Um, it's called the Evolution of Desire, and it's about how Rene Girard had this discovery of mimetic desire and took him his whole life and, and how it sort of played out in his life. Um, but he, he, his discovery of mimetic desire came through reading classic literature. Uh, he saw that in um, some of the greatest works in history, for instance, Shakespeare, um, all of these characters have models of desire. The, the best characters have mediators of desire. Mm-hmm. Think of Othello, right? Iago is this mediator um, between Othello and Desdemona. In fact, he's the mediator of like all of the characters in that play. Mm-hmm. He's the one pulling all of the strings. He can single-handedly make somebody um, want something, mm-hmm. to fall in love, to fall out of love, to get angry. He's the mediator of desire. And in all of Shakespeare's plays, there's a mediator of mm-hmm. desire. Um, same with other great authors. And Gerard saw this in the literature. And but we normally don't think of these people as mediators of desire. I mean, I spent years studying Shakespeare. I took him in high school and in college, and never heard these characters described in quite right. that way. So, like, first of all, this was like, I mean, X-ray glasses to go back and read Shakespeare, mm. just like it was to go back and read the Bible, because they're mediators of desire all through all through the scriptures mm. too. So it like opened up my mind to the, to literature hmm. again. It made literature super exciting because I, I saw this force in literature that I'd never seen before. So Gerard saw it there, and then he noticed that you know what is this other than you know humans write write literature, and we're embedding secrets of human nature into the writing, whether we mean to be doing it hmm. or not, right? Like whether Shakespeare intentionally did this or not, who knows? But it's true. Um, and then he began to, that's how his theory started. He began to work this out in other domains. His PhD was in history. So he went, studied history and saw how mimetic desire, how how models have determined so much of what's happened in history. Um, I tell the story in my book about one character, Eddie Bernays, who, who like used models of desire to basically invent the public relations industry. Um, so Gerard saw mimetic desire mm-hmm. everywhere. Right. He saw it in politics. He saw it in history. He saw it, he saw it being actually a fundamental building block of human culture. Mm. Right. And, and he dialogued with everybody. He was very interdisciplinary, but he was a hedgehog, uh, and not a Fox, right? The hedgehog knows one big thing. The Fox knows many things. Mm. Uh, he, he wasn't a Fox. He, he wasn't the kind of guy that knows like a bunch of different factoids. He, he, he knew one big thing. And the big thing that he knew was mimetic mm-hmm. desire. And because he, he knew this one important truth of human nature, he just spent, I don't know, the last 60 years of his life um, showing how, how pervasive mimetic desire is in all these diff- all kinds of different domains. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why, I mean, Gerard, I think, is such a fascinating person because there's just not a lot of minds. I mean, I think he was a genius. Um, Peter Thiel has said that when the history of the 20th century is written um, around 
2100 probably, uh, Gerard will be viewed as a figure as great as like, uh, like a Freud wow. was. Um, and I believe that, um, I, you know, I just think, you know, it's going to take a long time to fully appreciate him, but he, he was such a genius. Um, but not like the, uh, the kind of genius that Einstein was. I mean, he was a, he was a genius of human nature, I believe, who was able to, um, synthesize things from all these different areas of study mm. and, and reveal these things that maybe the people that are in those domains of study were too close to see for themselves. Right. Right. Like no literary theorist ever sort of realized the, the role that that these mediators had in these works. But Gerard did. Um, that says something about, you know, coming into something with fresh mm-hmm. eyes. Right. Um, you know, I think, it you know, it's it's very it's, it's hopeful for anybody that, you know, for instance, may may not have been in, in the Web3 world yet. You know, it's not too late because you might come in and see something that everybody else has missed precisely because you're coming in with fresh right. eyes. Right. Um, and that was Gerard. So I think he's a fascinating figure to study. Um, I tell a little bit about his life in my book. Um, but if you want the full biography, read Evolution of Desire. It's a great, okay. great book. Okay, will do.